So I just want to riff on an idea for a second. And and forgive me, I'm not going to show you a news story. I'm not going to show you a study. I'm not going to I'm not going to give you any data to back up anything I say. You can choose to buy into the idea or not. It's entirely up to you. But I want to talk about expression. And I want to talk about one of the obstacles that can get in the way of people fully expressing themselves and saying exactly what they want to say without worrying about what the response is going to be. And this is a topic I've hit on an awful lot on here, on Twitter, on Parler, on all all the social media. In fact, even in my locals community, I do a weekly Zoom call with my locals community where we all get on Zoom and we talk about what's going on and we use each other as as a support group and we actually practice expressing ourselves. Because if we practice in a safe environment where no one's going to ding us, that makes it easier when we need to do it in real life. And I'll, I'll talk about the locals community a little bit at the end, the info's in the video so you know how to join and participate in those calls. But I want to just talk big picture about what happens when you express yourself unapologetically. If you show up with confidence, what might be one of those things that keeps people from really showing up, saying what they want to say, doing it with confidence? Well, it's fear of the response. It's fear of the response that you're going to get from other people. And isn't that funny? Isn't it funny that we would decline to use one of the gifts we have been given, surely by being a human being, surely by being here, you don't have to do anything to earn it. Isn't it funny that we are afraid to use one of our innate gifts because we're afraid of what other people will express, because we're afraid of the pushback that we are going to receive. You know, I was having a conversation with Joshua yesterday, Joshua McGuire. You guys know him from this channel. He's actually on here every Tuesday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 6.30 Pacific. We do a show together called Nothing Remotely Controversial, where we banter out the news and Joshua, who is a professional psychic, pulls tarot cards and uses his psychic magic to tell us, like, what's really going on in the news. And it's fun and it's lighthearted and we don't take it seriously. And it's just about letting our hair down and having a good time. But Joshua in real life is actually my coach. We do actually have a business relationship. And when we do coaching, it is serious business. And one of the things that we were talking about this week is just receiving criticism from expression because I, like many people who (laughs) express themselves out there in the public, I get a lot of criticism. I get criticism every day. And so I, I absolutely understand the fear that people might have around expressing themselves because it does, it can get to you. It can be a little bit much. And one of the common criticisms I get, and tell me if this if this resonates at all, one of the common criticisms I get is, Carlin, who do you think you are to say such things? And oh my God, you're so full of yourself. And how dare you? And all these things. And so we were talking about this and Joshua said, well, Carlin, what is the opposite of being full of yourself? What do they want from you? Do they want you to be empty? Do they want you to be looking for validation from them? Is that what they want? And what he's really saying here is that when we get negative responses from people in the course of expressing what we think and what we want and what we feel and all those things, when we get negative responses, that's really more a reflection of what's going on with them and them trying to exert power and control over you than it is a reflection on you and whether or not you should be expressing yourself. You see, you don't need permission from anyone to express yourself. You only need permission from yourself. And when you do it, when you show up and you express yourself fully and confidently and unapologetically, you are going to get pushback from people because on a deeply subconscious level, when you're showing up and you're not asking their permission or asking for their validation, you are going to trigger every self-esteem issue that these people have, every conscious and subconscious self-esteem issue and and how that manifests itself is they are instantly, instead of acknowledging their own baggage and nonsense and doing the work to fix it, what they're going to do is they're going to come back at you and make you the problem. How dare you make me feel bad about myself? Well, guess what? You have my permission to be a little selfish in this regard. It is not your job to worry 
about their issues. It's not your job. You can't fix their issues anyway. They're the only ones who can fix their issues. The only thing that you need to be worried about is yourself and what you're putting out there and making sure you're proud of it and making sure you are standing behind it. And if they are making you question that, if you're, if they're making you say, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe I shouldn't have said that thing I said. If they're making you feel that way, they're gaslighting you, baby. They're gaslighting you. All they're doing is trying to exert power and control over you because that makes them feel better and validated as human beings because they are holding back in some way. Listen, when other people are trying to make you feel bad, whether it's about a big thing or a little thing, the very first thing you need to ask yourself is, do I actually, do I actually feel bad? Just without their criticism, take their criticism out of it. Would I feel badly about expressing this self? Would I regret expressing this particular thing? Would I regret calling this girl out on parlor for blatantly plagiarizing me? Would I regret any of that if someone wasn't pushing back on me? And if the answer is no, then none of it is your business. None of the rest of it is your business. Stop looking for other people to tell you how you feel. You decide how you feel. You decide what you do. You decide what you want to give to the world. Listen, how we express ourselves, it's, it's a reflection of how valuable we think we are. Our voice, how we use our voice, is a reflection of how valuable we believe we are. And people... Listen, people spout nonsense unapologetically all the time. I'm sorry. I know, like, you guys know I'm voting for Trump. You know, I know I got a lot of Trump fans on my channel. Donald Trump spouts nonsense unapologetically all the time. He does. And he does it in a really self-deprecating, hum humorous way. But dude doesn't always know what he's talking about. Joe Biden spouts nonsense unapologetically all the time. We can, we can play this game in both directions. CEOs of really big companies, they make stuff up on the fly. They spout nonsense all the time. What gives them the, what gives them the ability to do that? If you can't, are you really any different than them? No, the answer is no, you are not. Your job doesn't matter. Your station doesn't matter. You can do anything that anyone else can do. The thing is, you have to give yourself permission and you have to stop worrying about the response. Do you think for one red second that Donald Trump worries about the response he's going to get? Please. I'll tell you this. I get criticized on the internet every single day. Every single day, without fail, someone's got criticism for something, and you know it's fine. It's you know I'm not a victim. It's it, this is this is part of what this is, right? And I get I get very little criticism compared to a lot of people. God knows, but there's always going to be a criticism. If I took in every little bit of criticism, I would be like a puddle of mush under the table, man. But but also you get used to it. And I think maybe this is where I want to end on. You really get used to it. And when you get criticism all day, every day, it has a pattern to it. And it's so funny to watch. It's actually really kind of like, I kind of think of it sometimes as like this weird little social experiment where it's actually fascinating to me to watch the criticism that I get. And sometimes, sometimes I like to poke stuff out there, drop little bombs here and there just to shake the tree to really get the, to see how people are going to react. It is the same thing every single time. It is the same thing. It doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter where I say it. It doesn't matter how I say it. It is the same thing every time. And so when you get used to identifying and seeing these patterns, you really start to see that it is not about what you said, it is not about how you said it, it is not about the tone in which you said it, it is not about you being too big for your britches at all. None of that matters. And over time, it just becomes silly. And it stops bothering you so much. And that's really your sweet spot. That's what you want to get to. In fact, I'm going to make this argument. 
You want to receive criticism. If you are not receiving criticism, then you are not expressing yourself fully and unapologetically. You're not. You want to receive that. And after a while, when you get used to the criticism, you can start laughing about it. Saying, this is crazy. These people are nuts. These people got their own demons to work out, and that has nothing to do with me. And once you're able to start identifying those patterns, you start seeing it really does get a lot less scary. And so, yeah, you do get a little bit of heat, but what's the alternative? Joshua says to me, you know, Carlin, what's the alternative to being fully yourself? Is it to be empty? Is it to look for them for validation? What's the alternative? Is the alternative to expressing yourself unapologetically? What is what is the alternative to keep your feelings inside, to keep your thoughts and opinions to yourself when you could be sharing them with the world? And what does that say about how much you value yourself if you aren't willing to speak up? I'm not going to lie. Expressing yourself completely does not happen overnight. It is a process. But start framing it in terms of feeling proud about what you're giving. And if you wouldn't change it, if you feel good about it, if you look back and you said, yeah, yeah, I, that's exactly what I wanted to say. I have no regrets. Then that's all that really matters at the end of the day. The response you get from your friends, from mystery anonymous people on social media, from someone with a lot more YouTube subscribers than I do. None of that really matters. Doesn't really matter at all. The only thing that matters is how you feel about yourself. So that's that's all I got. I just wanted to pontificate on that a little bit because really that, that thought from Joshua, it really, it stuck with me. What's the alternative to being fully yourself? Maybe the goal, maybe the goal should be to be as full of yourself as possible because then at least you feel good you're feeling good about what you're saying what you're doing that's when you can lead a life that's worth living and that's not to say and and you don't need listen you know what it really is about being fully yourself like you don't need to be put other people down you don't need to make other people feel bad if you really are full of yourself then you have given yourself the love and appreciation that yeah i'm gonna get a little spiritual that god is giving you because god i mean Listen, if, if more people, I genuinely believe that a lot of what's going on in the country right now has less to do with social justice or equality or any of that stuff. A lot of the nonsense has to do with the fact that people are disconnected from a higher power, from a higher purpose, from, from spirituality. And I'm not saying people need to be Christian or Jewish or like practice any direct path because God knows I don't. But if people were more connected with whatever higher power they want, with whatever they think is there, then they would know how much our creator loves us. We're part of him. Him, he, she, whatever. I don't think it, God has a gender, but um, we're, we're part of that. We come from that. That's our source. That's our home. Why would our creator want us to doubt ourselves? Why would... Why would God want us to doubt ourselves? Why would God want us to feel bad? Why would God want us to hold back? Why would God want us to come to have this earthly experience without fully embracing every single second of it? I don't know. I don't I don't think God would want that. I think I think, you know, I think that God wants you to show up and be yourself fully and say what you want to say and knowing knowing that there is value to what you want to say and to what you feel compelled to say. I don't know, man. Those are my thoughts. That's really all I've got. I hope that there's some resonance in there somewhere. I know this is not really my usual topic, but I just felt really compelled to talk about it for some reason. And so I hope you got some value out of it. Leave a comment and let me know if you like this style of video because God knows, <laughs> no pun intended, God knows I can pontificate about this sort of stuff for hours and hours at a time. And I'm happy to do more of it if it's things that you find valuable. But listen, I, I did talk about in my locals community, I am doing these weekly empowered expression masterminds. They're every Thursday at noon Eastern time, um, at least right now, probably up until the election where we get together on a Zoom call. I do some coaching. We do some talking. We get together as a community. It is a wonderful group of people. Now, in order to join, you do need to be a supporter in my Locals community. Locals is actually free to join and have a look around, but if you want to participate fully and, and be in the discussions and be in the Zoom calls, you do have to become a supporter. That starts at five bucks a month, so it's really, really affordable. 
If you really need help, reach out to me. And listen, I will give everyone the first month free. If you use the promo code WELCOME, you will get a free month as a supporter. You can come try out the Zoom call. You can join us join us on Thursday for our next Zoom call and uh, join the community and get to know people. And I bet you'll stick around once you do.